Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. Um, absolutely fantastic that you could tune in um, to the show this week. We, tonight, are proud to say we've been joined by the one and only Sean Mayers, uh, Zimbabwean cricketer, superstar making waves in the ladies scene, and um, she will be tuning in just now. So I don't know if you can hear us there, Sean. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi, Mavs. How are you doing? All good, thanks. How's things going your end? Oh, geez. Loving it, eh? Um, loving that, you know, sport is just on the horizon. I can imagine. It must have been difficult throughout this lockdown. Yeah, it was difficult. Um, you know, lots of pressure just to, you know, stay fit and, you know, stay mentally ready and, you know, for one, staying safe and setting a good example for, you know, for people around me. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. That couldn't have been easy. So how are you keeping busy in the lockdown? Um, geez, uh, I got really involved in some online courses, um, you know, developing my coaching skills in both hockey and cricket and my fitness. Geez, I fell in love with fitness during uh, lockdown and, you know, fitness doesn't require too much space. Believe me, I know. So, yeah, I'm loving it, feeling great and I'm ma making sure I'm ready. <laughs> I can imagine. You must be keeping yourself very, very busy. And I've been checking out your social media feed. You're looking very fit and strong, eh? Ah, oh, geez, I have to. I have to be fit and strong. Um, when cricket starts, I, I honestly want to be at the top of my game. Um, playing some good cricket at the moment. And I just want to continue this great run of form I'm in. So we're going to jump straight into it, Sean. Um, the viewers definitely want to hear a lot about this, but look, for you, it must have been difficult for you um, across the board. There isn't a sport you can't play, is there? <laughs> um, I would say sport definitely has resonated with me um, throughout my life, and I'm willing to try anything. At the moment, uh, I'm trying golf, and that's a lot harder than it looks, but I am a very determined person, and... That's just how I've always approached it. Um, I would see something, I enjoy it. And yeah, but my first exposure was the Olympic Games. And it just went from there, Olympic Games, Ashes, World Cup. And now look at me. <laughs> so definitely no sport that you didn't play, is there? Uh, rugby was the only sport I didn't play. And now growing up, obviously, I'm a bit privy to some of this information. I'm <laughs> going to try not share too much of it. But um, you had to grow up playing with boys quite a lot. How was, how was that for you? Um, if I'll be honest, that was, I personally think, um, very fundamental to my, to my growth. Um, it's not easy playing with the boys and playing against them. It was very difficult, especially once you get to high school uh, and there's the physicality difference, you know, the difference of physicality definitely plays a role in it. But, you know, mentally the game becomes, especially with cricket, it definitely plays a big, a big part. And I'm very grateful. I was given the opportunity and I have a very supportive friends, you know, family and you know, I managed to gain the respect of not only my teammates, but also, you know, my competitors, man. Yeah, that's fantastic. And um, I just want to welcome everyone else who's also tuned in. I see the viewers are streaming in. We've got Sean Mayers here tonight, and she's telling us about her journey. And Sean, you say that you would have had to play against the boys. You obviously had your peers, your friends, everyone else around you now. How... Was there a mental stigma to it? Was there a certain treatment you got? Oof, uh, that's a loaded question. Um, in the beginning, there was lots of resistance. 
Um, my own teammates, some of them didn't want me there. Uh, lots of the older boys, you know, and as well as some of their parents didn't want me there. They're like, you know, you're taking the space of a boy who could potentially be playing in the team. And, you know, it was hard, but, you know, I made sure and the school I went to made sure that, you know, you have to earn your place. You can't just make it because you're a girl. You earn your place. I remember starting in Colts, I think it was Colts D. <laughs> And I was scoring and they were a player short and they needed someone and I put my hand up and that was the end of that. I played Colts D and made my way up to uh, first team in primary school and then high school. Uh, geez, that was also very difficult, if I be honest. Uh, you're now not only playing against, you know, people in your province and in your city, but now, you know, you're playing across the country and... You know, you get a lot of, you get, you get, I would say, a lot of comments, um, very sexist comments coming your way. But, you know, uh, by this time, I had lots of support from my teammates and, you know, they really supported me through it. And if anything, I came out a lot stronger and, you know, managed to gain the respect, managed to make some really good friends, you know, lifelong friends. So, yeah, through the through the difficult times, I managed to come out come out right, and here I am. Amazing, Sean. Like I've said previously, you are you're a trailblazer. You are you, you've walked a journey that no one else had walked pretty much before you, and you've almost had to break all these barriers playing with the boys. And I must make note that I have played against Sean a couple of times before. I'm not going to go into the detail because, uh, yeah, Sean might start laughing away. But, Sean, just as, as we go there, look, obviously growing up difficult for you, but you must be happy. Um, and you're obviously busy with your training, but I don't know if you've seen or heard of the Zimbabwean Women's League that's just started up, the Interprovincial League. Yeah, no, I've heard about it, and I am, I've been keeping comms there. As a woman in cricket and as, Zimbab as a Zimbabwean, I am so happy that it is finally happening again, that the women are playing cricket and there's more women, especially in Africa, playing cricket and they have the opportunity. Um, I've, as you say, I've played a lot of cricket and I'm still in training and I'm in a very privileged position. And all I want is for that to happen for other girls. Uh, sport not only cricket, but sports in general can definitely change your life. And I'm just glad it's happening. And I am looking forward to following and supporting some of my mates and hopefully, you know, seeing some really good performances there. So Sean, a critical question to ask at this point is, so will Sean Mayers be flying back and participating in this tournament? Unfortunately, I will not be flying back to participate in this tournament. Um, you know, at the moment, I am quite busy with my training here with uh, Central Gauteng, with the women there, and I am busy at work. I have communicated this, and everybody, you know, has been very transparent, and they understand my decision. And, yeah. That is very sad to hear, Sean. And I think for me, again, as usual, going left here, yeah. but for me, someone like you shouldn't, be having to, to work and do all these other bits with the amount of talent and ability that you have, we should be paying to just watch you play on TV and you're not having to worry about anything else. So what I'm glad about is, like you said, you're happy that at least the girls to come after you have something to look forward to. The young girls out there can actually watch, especially for in a Zimbabwean context, they can watch and look up to players in that interprovincial league and have something to dream about, you know, how about that? Imagine you had something like that growing up. Jeez, I, I mean, I would love to say, I, I would love to go and play in the women's big bash and in the, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, women's IPL and, you know, I'd love to play there, but I also understand that, you know, with that there, you know, you need a lot more exposure and coming from a smaller country, it isn't as easy. You know, you don't have a lot of opportunities to play internationals. So, you know, it does become a little bit more difficult. But, you know, I'm, I'm going on this journey. Yes, nobody has, not many people, I would say, in Zimbabwe have gone through it, if any. And I just want to make sure that for the people coming after me, whether it's 
in Zimbabwe, South Africa, wherever it is, however I can help, it's as long as it's a lot easier for them and, you know, I'm helping them, you know, achieve their goals and grow the women's game. Um, you know, I'm happy. That's, that's, you know, essentially what we want. 100%. Sean, you're 100% spot on and you're such an inspiration, you know, for someone to not be just worried about themselves and wanting um, to be making headlines, you're thinking about those to come after you and that is phenomenal. And to have a trait like that, hats off to you. Sean, through this journey, it must have been difficult. It's must, there must have been times where you must have thought to quit, you must have thought to do something else. Or what kept you going throughout? Um, I've been very, I would say very lucky to have the family I have. I made a decision when I was 11 that um, at that time there wasn't a Zimbabwean women's team and I made a decision I am going to play cricket with Andy Flower. And, you know, that was my life's ambition. I'm going to play cricket with Andy Flower because there was no women around. And then I did watch... I think my first exposure to women's cricket was watching New Zealand and Australia play. And I watched Karen Rolton bat. And I was like, I want to play on that stage. And I think, yes, there have been hard times where I thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm, I can definitely, it was a hard consideration where, you know, to potentially take a hockey scholarship and go and play in the States, you know, and study there and, you know, take my hockey career further. But, you know, cricket was a family sport and, you know, you're playing it, I think I was playing it from the age of five and it just, I couldn't imagine going to the States and never potentially playing cricket with Andy Flower um, because I still had that little 11 year old girl and I'm like, I still want to play cricket at that level and I want to play at this, on the same stage as Karen Rolton and H Heidi Tiffin. I'm like, these are all legends of the game. And those are the women I wanted to play against. Um, you know, now it's a little bit different. But, you know, there was some hard times. And I did take some time off cricket. Uh, soon after high school, I focused on hockey. I was very frustrated. But, you know, it was just the perseverance and support from my family. And, you know, put the, putting things into perspective uh, that really helped me, you know, persevere, keep going. You know, it's, it's your passion, but always make sure that, you know, there's always something to fall back on. What a journey, Sean, and you've nailed it there. You've said that there has been times, you've openly said there has been times where you found the going very tough. And I know I've gone on about your cricketing ability, but not many people know that you are an international hockey player. You captained the Zim ladies under 21s and you've played um, for the full ladies national team. How, how was that? Jeez, that was, that was an experience. Um, I remember straight out, straight out of high school, um, I was preparing for under 21s and, you know, you managed to get the call up and it's such an honor um, to get that call up because, you know, you get told the history as, you know, from the golden girls the first Zimbabwean team, you, there is a gold medal in your history. And you go from there and you're like, I'm going to represent my country. And, you know, in one of the, I, in my opinion at that time was the biggest women's sport. We've got a, we've got a, you know, gold medal. And geez, it was, I would say at that time, all encompassing. Um, I enjoyed every minute of it uh, with the women's team. I was a youngster in that team, so I learned a lot. I played with Nikki Watson and was very lucky that we came from the same province. So I really learned a lot from her, Michelle Williams, Michelle Mullins, you know, a lot of not only the women's players, but the men's players as well. And, you know, you were there. So, um, yeah, it was honestly a fantastic opportunity and then you know playing for the under 21s as well and you know just to correct you there I was vice captain uh Kelly Kovac who was my captain and you know just to play with players like that and against you know some of the bigger nations in Africa was such a privilege and an honor to know that I am I'm part of something bigger than me was I would say was the best thing ever 
I am in good company here tonight. Sean Mayers, international cricket player, international hockey player. You're also a qualified umpire. But before I jump into that, you are also a qualified teacher. Sean Mayers, what can't you do? Um, at the moment, if you take me to a golf course, um, I'm still learning. So uh, if you will see a very, you know, wobbly, looking like a giraffe type player. But give me a few months, ma'am. Um, I'm coming to Cape Town and we can, you know, definitely, you know, go, go around the course and, you know, hopefully I'll give you a run for your money. <laughs> Sean, I'm not going to risk that. You're probably going to beat me. So you are being very humble, I'm sure. And just tell me a little bit more about the teaching side of things. Um, I would never have guessed that you're, you're a teacher. Um, you know, ma'am, straight after high school, I, I just knew I wanted to work in sport. Um, I thought I was going to go into high performance sport and I was going to work with, you know, top athletes. And I took a gap year, you know, to my parents, we had a discussion, we agreed, um, we're going to, I'm going to spend a year just, you know, focusing on my sport at that time was hockey and cricket, um, you know, very tight schedule at the time. And I started coaching and that's when I realized I don't necessarily want to work with top athletes. I get a lot more fulfillment working with, you know, young athletes and, you know, young players, you know, and developing them and making sure that, you know, for one, they don't make the same mistakes I make, but also, you know, helping them achieve their goals, whatever their goals are. And I just so happened at Petra High where I was uh, doing my gap year. Uh, they, I had a very brief experience in the classroom and I absolutely loved it. And yeah, I got the opportunity to study teaching and education. And yeah, I teach geography and history and PE at the moment. So yeah. Oh, Sean, why am I not surprised? You, you excel at everything you do. Everything you touch turns into gold. And I'm, I'm sure it's by no mistake. Um, and for me, what, what the most appealing thing about you is, is you're a well-rounded individual. You have a good heart. You can play sports. You also have a teaching qualification to your name. And you want to give back to society, which is, for me, the pinnacle of being just a sportsman because, or a sportswoman because you've got all these strings to your bow. And at the moment, as things stand, you could pack your bags, go back and play cricket, or you could still be in the classroom. So hats off to you for that. I do not know where you find the time. How, how did you put all these things together? Um, <laughs> lots of sacrifice. I, I would say I was very, I was very lucky um, that I was playing. I played my first internet cricket my first international cricket match at 14. So from a young age, I had to learn time management. It took a lot of sacrifice. Um, I didn't see my friends as often as I would like to, but it also meant I'm spending a lot more time, you know, honing on, honing my game, honing the skills I, ha I have and, you know, really understanding not only myself, but the people around me and how to work with them. It did force me to grow up a little bit quicker than I would have liked. Um, but you know, my parents were very supportive and their only, I would say the only thing was, you know, you have to, you have to have, you know, normal school and normal teenage experiences. You must, you must experience that. And I, I was a player, I was a person and I still am where if I set my mind to something, I will do whatever it takes to reach the goal and you know work and fight for it so you know sometimes you know my parents would be like you know don't you want to go and see your friends and i'm like no uh you know i need to do some extra training i'm working towards something and i'm lucky to have the friends i have who have been very supportive family is very supportive and yeah um it's just lots of sacrifice lots of sacrifice uh, in the beginning lots of tears because you can't do certain things but you know, there's a bigger picture and you just have to keep that in mind. I can only imagine how much sacrifice that has taken. And um, 
yeah, if anyone could do it, it would have been Sean Mayers, wouldn't it? <laughs> but Sean, <laughs> critical question, critical, critical question. Um, and I'm very interested to know the answer to this one. Will we see you play for the national team again? Um, at the moment, I, I can definitely say I am not going to play for the national team right now. Um, I do want to take this time to prepare for life after cricket. Um, I love representing my country and I would, you know, everybody, I would say as a cricketer, if that's what you want, you want to go play on the biggest stage and, you know, represent your country, go to a World Cup. But I also understand that, you know, I can't play cricket forever and I need to make sure that there is life after cricket. Um, Zimbabwe cricket have been great and have afforded me such amazing opportunities that I don't think, you know, I, I can't thank them enough. But I also need to be aware that there is a life after cricket. You can't play cricket and retire at 65. Um, so I am just focusing on that. But I would not close the door forever. I would definitely say at the moment, you won't see me in national colours, but I won't close the door. Mm, Sean, that makes me sad and happy at the same time. But before I go on to my next question, I'm just going to ask the viewers at home just to you welcome to pop in a few questions that you'd like me to ask Sean. Um, yeah, it can be anything. Uh, I did threaten that I'd ask her to sing uh, on the live. So if someone has a song suggestion, I'd absolutely love that. <laughs> but <laughs> Sean, look, you've, your answer's really just thrown me off. Um, completely, because that was my hope. And for a young lady, it, it, what makes me really sad, it, it, it's a young lady who's telling me that she's preparing for life after cricket before she's even reached, I would say, her peak. You know, I, in my mind, would be thinking, Sean Mayers is thinking IPL, Big Bash, um, and, and, and. You know, I'm like, those opportunities are there, but I also had to be very realistic. When Zimbabwe cricket was suspended and, you know, that was all happening, it was very difficult. I lost out on, you know, not only me, but my teammates. We lost out on the opportunity to go to the qualifiers. Um, you know, we lost out on vital game time. And, you know, I... Personally, I didn't get, you know, to go and play for the, you know, the women's, the women's high performance team, the ICC team. And that was very, that was very painful. And it also made me realize that, you know, there is a life after cricket. You know, you can't play forever. And I just need to make sure that, you know, if, you know, because anything can happen, you can get injured, you know, life happens. And I just want to be prepared Cricket, as a woman all over the world, um, they will tell you that this is the journey they had to take, that they had to make, you know, hard decisions like this. I'm in a position right now where I get to play for the Lions and I'm playing really competitive cricket with some of the best players in the world and against some of the best players in the world. And I'm not only learning from them and their experiences, um, but I'm also able to take not only my own experience uh, and their experiences, but and pass them on to the the girls I'm coaching and you know make you know help them make some good decisions and go and play at that level but I will definitely tell you now if an opportunity came for me to go and play in a big in you know the women's big bash women's IPL in the hundred you know I'm not going to say no I will definitely jump at that opportunity as any cricketer would um, but yeah I just have to be realistic about the situation on the ground Again, makes me sad and very happy at the same time. Um, but look, we're just having slight technical difficulties, but want to give a shout out to our media partners who do all our branding, Conquer Media. Shout out to Conquer Media. If you're looking for anyone to look after you in that regard, they're the ones sponsoring tonight's live. Um, check out their work, check out their Facebook, check out their Twitter, and you will not be disappointed. Sean, I'm going to jump into the comments here um, and the questions. We might need to go quite quickly because we only have five minutes. But the first one I see here is from Sarah Bennett. 
she's just said you are an international hockey umpire you're on that panel and wow well done uh where do you see yourself in the future with hockey uh mams uh i definitely i'm working towards to go to an olympic games an olympic games uh field world cup and indoor world cup for me that uh, on the international panel that's where that's where i want to go that's where i want to be and that's what i'm working towards Okay. Well, I I didn't know that actually. You're an international <laughs> player. It's good going. Well, just I won't play when you're refing because I get quite. Uh, yeah, let's stop there. I I I do say a lot. <laughs> uh, Mams, I've got a few stories of you playing and I'm umpiring. So, but we not we'll we'll talk about that another time. This live is about Sean Mays. Just a reminder, <laughs> FYI, Sean Mays. Uh, the superstar so we've got another question well another question yeah um we've got tk gonese asking if you're involved in any sort of charity work at the moment um at the moment i'm not i am looking to be more involved um i do help out wherever i can i do have friends who are very involved in um well, in Zim, uh, very involved in, you know, taking sports to uh, the higher density suburbs and helping our players there and exposing them to sport. So, you know, I, now that I'm in Joburg, I've, you know, relocated recently. I really still want to get involved and I am very open to working, you know, towards that. Fantastic. Good to hear. And... I don't know if I can say this on air, but I know that we, we, we've been in talks offline and I can assure you that there will be quite a bit of charity work or giving back work that we would like to get involved with you. Um, and yeah, just jumping from that, we've got a couple of minutes left, but Sarah Bennett has just told me something here in the comments, which is unbelievable, that you're the only female umpire who sits on the FIH panel in the whole of Zim. So once again, absolutely amazing. Um, you've got quite a long CV, eh? It's going to take quite a while to get through everything. Um, Sarah is way too kind. She definitely uh, played a part in helping me uh, develop my skills and as an umpire. Um, but yeah, um, I am still involved in trying to develop umpires in Zimbabwe. And hopefully I won't be the only one for too, for too much longer. Why am I not surprised the selfless, humble, and amazing Sean May is thinking of others before herself? Sean, we've got a couple of minutes to go. Um, but the question I always like to ask, what can a young girl in Zimbabwe, what can a young girl in Africa who wants to get involved in sport start to think about now? Um, education. Um, and be stubborn whatever it is, just be stubborn. Just dig your heels in and, you know, put your head down, put the blinkers on and work towards what, work towards your goal. You know, there are lots, what people don't realize as difficult as it is in Zim, there are lots of opportunities um, within sport and there are people willing to help as difficult as it is in Zim at the moment. But if you know what you want and you're willing to learn and be stubborn about your development. You will find the opportunities are there. People will be willing to help. And, you know, always make sure that, you know, education doesn't necessarily mean in the classroom only. There's lots of ways to get an education. I know my, edu I know my education uh, didn't go the most conventional route, but there are lots of ways to achieve your goals. And it's just about being stubborn and working towards it. Wow, wise words from Sean Mayers. Uh, thank you so much for that. I'm sure that that is a message that a lot of young and old athletes or anyone else who's ever gonna come across this would definitely use going forward in life. And you are the perfect example of this, how you dug your heels in and how you stuck to the task. Sean, I'm not gonna hold you up any longer. You probably run a very tight schedule and you're probably gonna do some push-ups straight after this. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for for jumping onto this and uh
can only wish you the best for the future. No, thanks, ma'am. And um, thanks to everybody, uh, you know, tuning in. And yeah, I look forward to working closely with Africa Sports Consultancy. Fantastic. Very exciting there. Thank you, Sean Mayers. Um, everyone who's tuned in to watch, I want to just say thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, your support is very much appreciated. And um, again, next week, we've got an interesting panel that's going to sit with. We are going to have two members on. Uh, it's a big surprise, but uh, it is in the world of tennis, uh, believe it or not. So definitely tune in for that. And as always, keep sanitizing, look after your loved ones. And until next week, it's goodbye from me.